Hello, good evening, Oral Gibbs, and welcome to Oral Gibbs Live, coming to you from World Star Studios at Amsterdam Shopping Center. And with me this evening, I have none other than the leader of the Up Party, our MP, Mr. Halago. How are you doing, sir? A good evening, Oral, and good evening to all your uh, televiewers out there. And uh, thank you for having me on the program. It's uh, the first time I'm doing anything since after the, the elections that uh, we just had. And I want to thank um, everyone for coming out during the elections as well, for supporting the party, myself. And thank you again for having me on the program. Well, thank you for accepting the invitation. And uh, how are things going uh, so far? Because um, on Friday is when uh, you're supposed to take office, right? Well, uh, this coming Friday, yes, uh, the, the 10th of August, uh, I'm October. sorry, October, <laughs> the 10th of October, uh, we're supposed to be swearing in as members of parliament. Uh, last week, um, Friday, actually, the informateurs also took in the, the new governing accord to the governor. Mm -hmm. So um, everything is uh, moving on schedule, I believe, uh, for the, the formation process itself. Uh, are, are you surprised? Because I, I want to come to you with this, Greg, because there's a lot of reaction right now um, from Europe and also in Ireland in terms of the change in the formation because before there were three parties and all this, the up along with another individual from the DP. Well, or if you if you go back to the the election night, or let's call it uh, election morning, because uh, the, you know the vote started coming in very late <coughs> and uh, or very early in the morning. And um, to see the three leaders of uh, the political parties get together that fast and actually form a government, um, you know, having three parties together um, to, to form a government, that means you're, you're talking about three different ideals, three different ideologies, uh, positions that uh, they really haven't thought about. And to haphazardly sign an agreement um, was, uh, I, I think, uh, looking to be a bit optimistic to have a government for the next four years. And, um, you know, we, we sat back and, and we acknowledged the process. Uh, we didn't bash the process in, in no way, uh, uh, no uncertain terms. <clears throat> we as uh, seven members of the UP, because we were the, the largest political party. Of course, I felt that we should have at least had an opportunity to, um, to speak. And many said, well, you know, it's similar to what happened four years ago. And actually, that's not the case, because uh, four years ago, it took nearly three to four days before a new government was formed and um, political leaders all had talks within within each other uh, this one was formed like i said in the fastest um, um, most haphazard uh, way ever uh, actually it was a, a written document rather than a type of document as to show you how fast it was supposed to happen at four o'clock in the morning um, now what we've had and in, in, in the whole process of, of what we've done over the last few weeks <clears throat> is when we were approached and and we had discussions with um, uh, MP elect um, Cornelius de Weaver about forming a new government. <clears throat> we started a process of saying, listen, let us make sure we go the, the regular route, the longer route than actually naming a formateur right away. And we had, um, we presented a document to the governor, <clears throat> not with just um, Mr. de Weaver and myself as leader of the United People's Party. No, we presented a document with all eight signatures. Uh, eight signatures being all the elect members of parliament coming in. And what that meant, um, Oral, is that you have a majority of, of parliament and that you have an, uh, a majority to be able to uh, put in the new government of St. Martin. Uh, very different to the document that was signed between just uh, three members elect, although they being the party leaders, uh, we signed a document that made sure that all eight members of the incoming government or incoming parliament um, knew of what was going on. And based on that, uh, when I took the document to the governor, we asked him, let us uh, appoint uh, informateurs. And the informateur process um, was also done in the former Netherlands and Tillys, and is also done in the Netherlands. And what that does is not only uh, does it discuss uh, poss possibilities of coalitions uh, within the government of St. Martin, but also it discusses what the social um, avenues are. For example, the informateurs met with the SHTA, the Chamber of Commerce, the Chamber of Labor Unions. Um, they even met the clergy as well, so that you can get some ideas of what needs to be done um, for the, the governing program that will eventually come up. It isn't only about, again, political party ideology. 
it is also about what the community at large wants to see uh, the government of St. Martin tackle. <clears throat> In the discussion with the governor as well, we also named out that the, what our top priorities were or are now uh, the budget 2015 so that you do not get um, any uh, uh, position from Holland stating that we did not comply with the agreements that we have, which is the budget, and also these integrity reports, no less than three integrity reports that have been written. What we want to do is look at them, debate them, and uh, look at the recommendations that they are putting forward so that we can also look at making sure that that is part of the, the proper governance. Um, before that was, uh, you know, before we could even uh, get to that part, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Netherlands, uh, the second chamber, especially the, the two uh, good gentlemen started a, a huge uproar uh, up there as well. And you know, it is, it is unfortunate that they are allowed and, and they get involved in the politics of St. Martin. It shows you, um, you know, that n nothing is sacred anymore. <clears throat> the people came out, they spoke on an election process. The uh, party was by far the largest uh, political party in St. Martin. And again, if um, others want to be able to join in the process to form a government, it is their democratic right and democratic principle. Uh, you know, in, in the Netherlands, uh, I think that uh, there's only one country in, in Europe that has had more governments, and it is uh, the Italian uh, 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 the, uh, country of Italy. And uh, after that, right away, there's the Netherlands that has had, and this is the same process that we took over from the Netherlands. <clears throat> so it is the exact same um, way of, of electing parliamentarians and the formation of governments. Uh, for this little island, I'm not sure it is the best process because, again, uh, it creates um, a lot of issues uh, to deal with. Um, we just also, in this formation process, oral, we found out what the, the, the three um, breakups of government and the three formations of government cost the country. It was 3.4 million guilders. <clears throat> that is what it cost the country when uh, those governments fell. So it is something that why we didn't want to rush uh, the, the process is because we want to make sure that we're, we're looking for a government that's going to last four years. So now that um, <clears throat> you have a majority in, in, in parliament and the, the process, uh, the new government takes office on uh, the 10th of October, um, is there anything you want to share with us in terms of what are some of the key ideas or part of the governing program that you think is important for the people of St. Martin? Well, a few things. Or one, I want to make sure we, we are clear and your televiewers understand because they will probably see the same government in place on October the 10th, but you will now see different parliamentarians. <clears throat> and let me explain that, that process okay. before I answer you, your question. On October 10th, you're going to swear in your new um, parliamentarians. Those are the, the members elect um, from the different parties. So once they are sworn in, <clears throat> then those members itself uh, now will appoint the, the ones that, that form the majority of the parliament of Samadin will appoint a new um, government and a new cabinet. Uh, unfortunately, or, or fortunately, let, let's put it that way as well, we have not come to the final process of putting in the names of all the ministers as, the, as yet. So the present cabinet that is there um, will probably stay, and they can actually stay up until three months, especially um, the members elect, like for example, uh, Cornelius de Weaver, um, uh, Maurice Lake, both are ministers as well that are part of the present government. They can actually sit in their ministerial post and also in the parliament post for up to three months. And uh, again, we don't intend for the, 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 the oh. formation process to take that long because we're, we're right now in the formation process. Um, I think that once the names are known and those are presented to the governor, you have a, what they call a vetting process. So it has to go through certain different um, you know, judicial departments to make sure that um, no one has a criminal record or whatever else. And they are, they are, they are vetted well in terms of their taxes and things like that. Uh, that process takes, you know, <clears throat> sometimes up to two weeks. So we're hoping that that, that, that goes fast. But again, uh, I'm hoping that at least by the end of October, we will have um, the new Council of Ministers uh, sitting as well. So now, to get to, to that process, the document that was delivered to the governor um, on last Friday, which was the document handled by the informateurs, 
the governing accord was signed by all eight members of the new coalition. Mm -hmm. And we've um, basically stated that in 60 days, the new um, governing program will be delivered. But we are also highlighted in the governing accord some of the main points that we intend to tackle. <clears throat> and those are, you know, e exactly many of the points that the, the Dutch uh, Second Chamber has brought forward which I've stated, the, the budget 2015, mm -hmm. the integrity reports that, um, that are out, out there as well. We intend to um, debate them, handle them. Also, the issue of the, the gaming board for the, the casinos on the island, uh, the issue of, of um, uh, taxes and things like that. All of these things are going to be part of the governing program. Now, uh, the things that we promise the population of the country itself, because you know you have one, uh, the things that the, the second chamber cares about, they care about very little on St. Martin other than uh, only the, 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 the justice position on the, on the country, nothing to do with health care, nothing to do with housing, nothing to do with job um, security or, or, or job creation. Uh, and it's terrible to see that only one area um, they care about. <clears throat> and and may, maybe we'll get to a, a part in your program that we could discuss that too. But in the governing program itself, we're going to talk about housing creation. We're going to talk about um, uh, the, the bettering of the districts that we're living in, uh, the bettering of, of the, the justice system that we're talking about, also the issue of protecting our population, the creation of jobs, uh, the creation of a better uh, tax system that we have. So you're going to get all of those avenues in the governing program as well. All right. <clears throat> um, when you look at What's happening? The integrity report that came out. What's your personal uh, opinion about it? Well, one, I, I just received the um, the Price Waterhouse Coopers report that that was actually commissioned by the governor of Martin, <clears throat> and I started reading it. Uh, it it's um, you know, <laughs> it's a document that uh, and and it typical. Um, yeah, a consulting uh, a report. You know, you write one report so that you can get the uh, the position to do the next report. <laughs> and in there has a lot of hearsay, a lot of rumor mills, um, you know, unfortunate um, oral. But one of the things, like, I, I think that they brought up in the report, and by the way, it's never been officially debated in Parliament. Uh, an official stance hasn't really come from the Council of Ministers of St. Martin. But like I said, I, I got the report unofficially. I started reading it. <clears throat> one of the things that they mentioned is the fact that we should have like a, what they call a whistleblower policy. So say, for example, someone uh, knows something that goes on, you can um, you know, bring in uh, whatever perceived position on that person. Uh, it is brought forward to whomever it is, and um, it comes forward that that person doesn't get injured. But <clears throat> here we have Ansid Martin a situation. The person that they are basically speaking about or, or coming to talk about also has a reputation to protect. Uh, you know, or if someone comes and, uh, and accuses you that you you uh, been stealing or you've been uh, doing something, you also have a reputation to protect. So it shouldn't be only the one that is screaming or, or actually coming out and talking about you, but you should also have recourse uh, in the situation of being able to say, listen, I need to protect my reputation. <clears throat> I'll give you a case in point. Um, my person, you have members of the second chamber in, in, in Holland talking about vote buying, and yet it has never been proven uh, in any court that I have done such. As a matter of fact, just because, uh, and, and I think that's also a, a terrible part of it, because of a judge mentioned something that I was never questioned, nor was I brought in to, um, to talk about um, vote buying or whatever. And yet, I am being accused uh, by the second chamber of something that I have never even been questioned about. Mm -hmm. So here you have, and I don't have any recourse to go for them. And I think it's, it's also a, a very bad thing. The public prosecutor also mentions in something there, mentions no substantiated evidence. Uh, the, the, you know, we spent uh, $3 million in, in, um, in the election process. And or I'm, I'm going to be very happy when we present the books of the, the UP party, and we will, be, we will be the first one that, that does so. And people will see that our elections don't cost anywhere close to that, because we have believed in, in, the, in the planning principle, which means if you plan well and you, and you also keep um, your, your, your products that you have in gear, 
it, the cost of your, your election campaigns can be um, considered to be um, 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 inexpensive. Um, I think that we spend between three and four hundred thousand dollars on our campaign and that's what we're going to be presenting to the, the population within short as well. So y you can see the, the, the types of things that we're talking about. A lot of, uh, a lot of it in, in Samad is, is, is that, like what we would call melee. But, mm. but uh, MP Halga, you will understand that here you have a judge mm. and people expect a judge to be an honorable person and not say anything in that is not uh, true. It came from a judge those statements about you. So people assume automatically that if a judge is saying that, that there has to be some truth to it. Well, uh, he was stating it in his, in his closing uh, remarks <clears throat> that when he dismissed the case, first of all, the case was dismissed. Um, the public prosecutor appealed. Um, the judge said that, you know, you should have um, um, questioned um, Mr. Heiliger. First of all, or I was nowhere even anywhere around um, when, uh, when the situation happened. As a matter of fact, I, I campaigned mostly on the road. Um, I'm never in a particular office because I believe in going to see the people themselves. Uh, and I'm in the districts all the time, now, every day. Um, this last campaign, same thing was, I was in, never in an office to, uh, to say. I never gave any directives uh, to, to volunteers to do anything. You know, it's, it's, and it, it's a, a, a situation where if you're coming from Europe <clears throat> and you were never, and you've never lived in Saman and you were never born in Saman, you will not understand the culture of Saman. Mm. And I, I've told you that I go on, on, on certain programs and people are waiting outside f to talk to me about their different um, uh, problems or challenges that they have in life. And if you don't listen to them as an individual, uh, is, is very different to the second chamber. They do everything via the media. Uh, and we do everything here in Samaritan very differently. Most of our indigenous population still believe in being able uh, to touch and hold and speak to the politician directly instead of via the newspaper, radio, and television. They want to speak to your individuals. Of course, the media plays a, a great role in, in certain other ethnic um, um, situations on the island. But at the end of the day, your indigenous population goes back to the old days where uh, everybody's neighbor knew everyone else and they want to be able to know their politician. And I don't see in the Caribbean that is an accepted method um, for everybody. I mean, most of the, the, the British countries have the, um, the Westminster system, which basically means that, you know, every politician or every MP is responsible for a certain area. So he knows Mary, Joe, John, uh, whoever else is in that area and unfortunately in St. Martin, well, we know the whole island and the whole island knows the politician. Now, you, know, you have um, Dutch politicians who are saying, well, you know, uh, Mr. Halliger is now going to be uh, in government mm -hmm. and we want to introduce certain measures in uh, St. Martin. Do you feel responsible for that in any way? Well, you know, Aurel, it, it's, a, it's a terrible thing that we St. Martiners like to bring each other down. And I'll tell you something, you, you have certain politicians in Samaritan that, that brag that they are, the, the, uh, certain members in the second chamber that are doing this is their best friends. Um, you have um, certain politicians in St. Martin that have been able to let the cat out of the bag and say, you know, they are the ones responsible for getting the second chamber to, to talk about St. Martin just because they are not in government. It's, it's a terrible thing that you basically what you're trying to do is bring down the country because you are not the one uh, in government. And, you know, no matter what had happened, you never seen um, Theo Heilega get involved in bashing the country or trying to instigate others outside of our country to bash the margin. If there's one thing I believe in is you, 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 all politics is local. Our population deserves the right to be able to, to voice and to vote for whom they want. Um, every one of us, uh, and I've stated it during the campaign, um, whether you have one dollar, whether you don't have education, whether you have education, whether you have a million dollars, or whether whatever color of your skin, or as long as you have that Dutch passport, you're allowed to vote. And some of the, the lawyers and, and in our great country believe they know it all, and, and they believe they know it better than the, the little people on, on the island as well. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> it is our people of Samaritan, all of us, get to a point and elect um, politicians for whom they feel should run the country. And it is really unfortunate, like I said, 
um, um, certain people in the, in, the, in the new opposition that feel themselves obligated to, um, you know, put false rumors into the, the Dutch and especially into the second chamber and start these innuendos going and hurting the country. Not only Theo, it's hurting the country because they are not in power. Let me ask this, uh, Pelago, because I, I call um, Mr. Um, Cornelius de Weber, mm. Mm. and I said, you know, I'd like to give you an opportunity to also explain yourself. He told me he'll get back to me, and I hope he will get back. Uh, but people in Europe, uh, many in Samar are saying, well, you know what, um, the Halaga paid Cornelius de Weber to jump the DP mm. and go to the up party. Um, true or false? You know, Oral, this is this is, is so much nonsense. When the first um, government broke, <coughs> and um, the one four years ago, and one of the the members of the uh, party left, Romain Laville, um, you know, and he came back. It's only when he came back, Theo paid him to come. When he left, nobody brought out the innuendo that he was paid to to jump ship. But when he came back, because he admitted to 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 making a mistake in terms of of breaking the first government. No one said, uh, you know, uh, they paid him off then. But as soon as he came back, uh, Theo paid him off. Um, uh, you hear about other, um, let's call it rumors on other politicians, Theo offered them this. I mean, all right, at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's like no one has their own mind. Nobody has. I, I'll tell you something. The, the, the Weaver family is a very strong family, uh, very strong morals, um, um, very educated people. Uh, um, Mr. Cornelius de Weaver, again a minister, um, he got the second highest votes on the Democratic Party's list. If you take his votes and you take the UPS um, um, votes in, 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 in principle, you have eight seats if you took the, his numbers. So, I mean, when you come up uh, and anyone else crosses over, um, basically the same in the windows come. It, and it, it, it goes on and on, the constant rumors on the island that are all far from the truth. Because if you hear in the past week that while we were busy um, negotiating the accord, members of the, the now um, opposition called every member of the up, every member of the up except me, every member of the up except me to try and get them <coughs> to break. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the question would be, I wonder what they were offered as well, you know, and, but no one seems to like to plant the rumor that out there, that why, um, only Theo. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing that it's only Theo, and I could tell you, all of them um, got a little tour of K Hill. They took a, a drive to the back by a school there where there's a container, and they all had to meet certain um, individuals from the, the National Alliance that they had to see about farming or leaving the up. So, I mean, when we, when we want to talk uh, about innuendos, we, we could talk about exactly where my members itself were also taken to try and farm government. So you're, so you're saying they were trying to attract your members away from your party? Oh, yes. All, um, as a matter of fact, all of them got phone calls. All of them got um, their meetings. Of, and it's amazing that <clears throat> the National Alliance knew of what the second chamber was coming with even before the second chamber met. So it is to tell you that the things that I'm telling you here in your program uh, can be proven that they have been pushing and they have been um, pushing the Dutch to start these things to see if one of the members would get nervous in St. Martin and that we could get the population itself to go and also listen. And you know what it has happened though, Oral, is it, is it has actually made the members within the, the up and the present coalition with Mr. Dweeber um, very strong. So where the document that you see now, <clears throat> there is no division of portfolios among um, the, 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 the MPs or the, the parties involved. As a matter of fact, all eight will now be involved or are involved in the process of selection of who will be ministers. That is unheard of in St. Martin and it shows you now the bond and the strength that this new coalition has. So one of the things is that, and I was speaking to someone on, on, on speaking about everything, is that the measures that want to be implemented right now mm. are measures whereby St. Martin really have no control over in that the judges are not appointed by St. Martin, prosecutors are not appointed by St. Martin. So um, does that make a difference to you as party leader? Well, or let me put it this way. In the justice system itself, the, the, the Dutch were only concerned in two real um, ministries on the island. One, 
was justice and one was finance. Um, <coughs> they were not they weren't really anywhere considerate on health, education, um, um, Romy which is public mm -hmm. works or, or sport development or social development and there is only two ministries justice and finance because with those two ministries basically you control the country. Um, in the justice system we have little to say about the uh, position of judges, we have little to say about the appointment of public prosecutors or what the public prosecutors do, we have very little to say uh, about uh, anything within there other than the running of immigration, police and things like that. If you have noticed what uh, the minister himself wants to do, he wants to strengthen uh, the public prosecutor's office, they want to add a unit for uh, white collar crime and they want to um, uh, increase the amount of border control and they want that more <coughs> that the, the local um, um, justice system does not know what they are doing and, uh, and I think they want to increase the amount of air stake. So, basically let me put it this way, um, you know uh, everybody's phone and Sir Martin you know that it means you will have a, a secretary on the other end of your phone because now your, your conversations will be whatever it is and you know that is that's what is going to happen on the island, but it does not change the, the belief um, that I have as well and the party has in strengthening that our people continue to look for jobs, we continue to get better education, continue to get better housing. It just means that now uh, they which is the, the situation that we have even now will be even strengthened even more. Is there anyone in, 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 in the Netherlands that you can pick up the phone in the government and call and say, hello guys, uh, maybe you should come home and have a talk with me? You know, or, you know, four years ago I said, you know, let me try and, and not be antagonistic um, towards the Dutch government and um, I went on a, on a trip up there, tried planning it two months in advance and when you wanted to meet with the, the Dutch politician, <coughs> none of them wanted to meet with you. So, you ended up meeting with their, uh, their secretary general, um, I think we, I was able to only meet with like one minister, um, I met with one um, faction leader and it was always the smaller factions like the, the party for the animals, um, uh, sort of other smaller um, 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 parties like I said and you know and it is a pity that you, you, you try and they like this sensationalism because again it you know that in, in the Netherlands of course uh, they are going to have elections within short as well I think next year. So, you are going to have a lot of posturing and everything as well and if, if, if anyone wants to really look <coughs> at um, the, the gentlemen that are constantly bringing up things about Sir Martin, if you look into their parties you will see the most corrupt uh, cases actually come from the two gentlemen that are actually talking negative things about Sir Martin, they have over 40 something cases of corruption within their parties that have been reported in the Netherlands. So, I mean you know sometimes you, you they have to look within themselves before you are talking about Sir Martin and again oral Sir Martin as a country is only 4 years old. <clears throat> other countries the great United States other great countries have had hundreds of years uh, to perfect and, and still not perfect their constitution, their regulations, their policies and Sir Martin is only 4 years. We have a lot of challenges in our country and, uh, and instead of us also looking at our people, what we are looking at is integrity only and, and things like that and I am not saying that that is not important, it is important, it is high on our agenda, but we also need to start taking care of the people of Sir Martin. All right. <coughs> we have to go to a break in case you have just joined us here watching our special edition of Oral Gibbs Live with the leader of the Up Party, MP, with the Halaga. When we come back, we will continue speaking right here on our Oral Gibbs Live. Please stay with us. At Najiko, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you are fully covered after an accident, the security of your home and everything in it that means so much to you. And knowing that even when the weather does its worst, you and your family are covered. At Najiko, we are about much more than just insurance. We are about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Welcome back to uh, Oral Gibbs Live. I am here to speak with uh, MP Theo Halliger, leader of the United People's Party. And uh, MP Halliger, uh, there are some people talking say, well, maybe you should pick up the phone and call Sarah, call William, call Francis. So guys, uh, 
let's form one government and oh, are you open to that or what do you think well you know oral it's it's always um funny that how some some people look at it that i don't put out my hand <clears throat> when the three of them formed the gov the first government you know nobody uh, wanted to call me or nobody wanted to answer my phone calls um i've tried to speak to all three um i think that uh, there are ideologies that can be uh, hammered out for sure with with in particular maybe two of them for sure uh but if none of them really wanted to uh to form a government uh, with the up because again they looked at the up as a, uh, if you got seven seats now <clears throat> and you kept you in power the next election there might be a need for uh, another coalition because you might win the eight seats especially if the the things that you promise the people that you can do yeah. and um oral but let me, let me put it this way i am a person of very open mind uh, we have a coalition now Uh, a very good coalition a very good um, um, discussions um, have been very very good um, especially what we want to do for the country if others want to join listen you know the door is open uh, they can of course come in uh, but they're not going to dictate especially what the the new program is of course they can help but they're not going to dictate um, the whole uh, status that that, that we are working towards but like i said doors are always open to welcome anyone in in joining and being able to govern for the people of Samaria. The discussion is is that they're saying well this is the only way that Samaria can avoid the Dutch really trying to introduce measures. Yeah, but well, they will introduce measures whether who who comes in um, or I mean <clears throat> there was a time when I can remember in the Netherlands in Tilly's uh when the dutch wanted um poria to be back in government and they promised that if poria came back in government they would have uh put in hundreds of millions of dollars and gilders into the economy and everything as well and then they got poor poria back in government uh, and they only had him put more taxes and more measures on the people and at the end of the day not a cent was invested you know <clears throat> what people have to realize too in our great country or and and i stated this on on many other occasions and I'll state it again and our entire budget not one penny of our budget comes from Holland not one penny comes from the dutch government all the measures all the taxes that are collected come from the tourists and the local people of our country everything that is the salaries of civil servants uh, the fixing of roads the, the the construction of schools everything comes from our local budget before in the past you had funding that was of course available from the european union and also the dutch government but well, the only funding that we get now which is also very sporadic comes from the european union uh, nowhere else uh, so you know when you when you the dutch also have a a a um a saying we betaal we paal in in this situation they the only place that they would want to put um, extra effort into and money into is in the justice system but in nothing else i mean if you are if you are looking at trying to solve the problem then we need to look also into putting money into healthcare education housing mm -hmm. because if you're not educating your people and you're not housing them the right way that is where crime stems from it isn't only that you're looking at always trying to get rid of the the head of the country because then you believe that by getting rid of the leaders of the country then you can rule the masses of the country itself no it, it's time that we the people itself know that and we have to tell that to others outside that we want to be able to um uh, run our own government uh, you know and it is I'm, i'm not saying that i don't welcome them in in helping in the in the judicial affairs department but you should also be willing to help in other areas as well i'm, I'm glad you mentioned poria and i want to go back there because i think history is very important it's a really good indicator of the future in a way because poria was left hanging by the dutch that's right and up to today we are feeling the effects of that because the turnover tax was a product of that Mm. something that I've been against from day one mm. but people will say well it was Sir Martin's suggestion for this turnover tax mm. uh you've been uh, in politics I think what 20 years now are you seriously looking at a solution to the tax situation in Sir Martin because too many people privately but admit especially in business that this turnover tax for those who are cheating the government it's fine with them but for those who who see the real problem 
it is hurting this island. Do you have any ideas or you want to share with us that you think you should do something in trying to change that tax structure, remove that turnover tax, find something else in the place? You know, well, four years ago we started out um, a whole uh, reform of the, um, the tax base on St. Martin and uh, it, it was unfortunately, you know, you, you had, uh, this is our third Minister of Finance in, in four years. Uh, every time you change the Minister of Finance, you basically change the policy of government, you basically change the ideas that are coming there. Um, that is why also one of the discussions that we had is that uh, we don't um, change the present Minister of Finance because you, you need continuation in government too. So the, the, the question that you're asking me, yes, I, I believe that the tax structure, I mean, I don't want to turn over tax, I think that the, the, the income tax um, um, on, on, the, on the population itself is a, extremely harsh as well, but you need to have a full four years of government. Uh, to be able to institute the changes that need be. And, <clears throat> and that is one of the big discussions that we've had with the MPs as well. Uh, unfortunately, other MPs for the last four years does, did not understand that you need four years so that you can be able to get the process going. Because to get things rolling in government, uh, I'll just give you a, a quick example. For to get certain laws out and into parliament, it takes sometimes two years. Uh, to change uh, certain things in there. So imagine now having government and having to change the tax base or the tax structure, not tax base, the tax structure. Uh, it's going to take some time. So yes, Oral, uh, we need to look at all the instances, but also, of course, we need to sit and, and, and create a better partnership with, with, with those of our brothers and sisters on the French side, because whatever we do um, affects them, and whatever they do affects us as well. So that is something that we're going to have to push forward. No, um <clears throat> I'm sure that uh, today the SEC conference open. It's going to run until the 10th of October, just when you all take office. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Is this, this is the second time, right, that they? Well, in, um, I actually was looking through my closet mm -hmm. the other day, and I found my shirt from um, the, the, the conference, I think it was over 10 years ago that right. we had it. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, um, you know, we had, a, uh, we had well over about um, 900 or 1,000 attendees. Uh, it was really the uh, uh, remarkable achievement at that time, and you know I, I congratulate um, the, 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 those that are involved in, in the FCCA conference itself. It's become a little bit costlier than what we spent uh, ten years ago, over wow. ten years ago. Uh, but again, it's an important conference to have. It, it's a pity, though, oral that we were not able to do the because when they had asked us to do the conference when I was in government um, as a minister. I said, no, we were working on, you know, the Emilia Wilson product and the creation of other major attractions on the island. And it's, it's a pity that for the last four years, we haven't been able to do anything new uh, in, in, in tourism itself to be able to attract um, the, the thing here. So my idea would have been, though, that <clears throat> once we had the conference, I would have been able to show off some of the highlights of new projects on the island. But I can tell you, that um, we are going to continue uh, the discussions on the Emilio Wilson Park itself uh, to look at the creation of a, of a, of a product there. Uh, that I think it's, it's not only for the for cruise tourism, but also for our local population. You know, I'm, I'm tired of only seeing my kids. All they do is spend the whole day on the iPad, and you know, mm -hmm. not wanting to get out. We need to also create attractions on the island that um, benefit our people and as well as the tourists. But Overall, the, the FCCA conference is a, is a, is a, is a big hit for us. Um, <clears throat> I've also been asked to speak at it as well. You know, uh, these are people that I know uh, quite well. Uh, they are all proud to be associated with St. Martin. Uh, they are proud of the product that we've been able to offer. And this is also, again, getting back to it, Oral, those people that have been feeding the Dutch and the Dutch Parliament, and the Dutch Parliament always talking negative about St. Martin. This is where it hurts um, St. Martin from being able to attract bigger and better businesses too. Because if you're only talking about St. Martin, unsubstantiated, and our own um, politicians, for the sake of trying to get in power at all costs, continuously to uh, push others to, to talk negative about St. Martin without any substantiated evidence creates problems for us to create and build better relationships. 
and this also you know can destroy jobs for taxi drivers for people that are working in the in the tourism industry and everything as well you know and it, it's really hurtful um, or because we've spent a lot of time building our relationship with with good people like this we will surpass 2 million passengers in 2015 this is a, 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 this is not something that started uh, today this started over 10 years ago uh, or more than that in terms of building the relationship it has taken us time we've built a great relationship now and we're able to reap now the rewards of that um, relationship there and guess what again <clears throat> showing you that the dutch had very little influence in creation of that uh, uh, that relationship it shows you that in st martin we can do it we can do it ourselves we are able to to build and promote and um, advance products that um, others uh, uh, you know want to fly in and and see what we have you know, um, ten years ago you, you brought uh, Michelle Page here and on the program right. I spoke with her. one of the things and I said this to Mr. Mark Maynard the other night is that she said local people can get involved in the cruise industry there's a lot of on island tours but it seems like people either wasn't listening mm. or maybe I'm wrong here um, not that many local people got involved what can be done to really encourage local people to really get involved in these uh, land tours and up uh, different uh, programs with the cruise ship industry <coughs> well oral right now you know if you if you look and I'm a person I like uh, trends I like mm -hmm. to read about the, the new trends I like statistics because that's the only way that you can plan you just don't wake up and somebody tells you something a and that's what you're going by the, the, the cruise ship passenger now uh, or even people that want to come here they just don't want to just drive around the island and that's it and that's a tour no they want what they call um, uh, uh, you know interactive tours so they have to be involved in uh, the, the, the again example the 12 meter regatta one of the most popular tours or is the most popular tour in St. Martin actually means that you, you get on board the yacht and you're actually um, you know pulling up the sails and tying the ropes and things like that and they want to be involved in those things and that's why <clears throat> I brought up also the Emilia Wilson because it's an interactive tour um, where you know you're going to be flying through the air uh, um, things like that uh, you know it, it's it's things like that that we need to create <clears throat> um, you see another one with uh, with locals being involved is, is the bicycle tour itself you know a lot of them hiking and, and, and bicycling um, in, in certain paths and that and that is something that we need to, to create in St. Martin I mean or a look at the the bridge that I took so much uh, controversy for as well because we added the, the bicycle path and the jogging path and one the amount of health conscious people that want to use that too um, the ring road itself which uh, was envisioned but have had similar things as well so you could have created also those kind of tours you know uh, people seeing the salt pond, um, uh, people bicycling. Uh, the, the Fort Amsterdam is something of a tour that uh, you know people want to be able to see, but not just like I say walking. No young person uh, just wants to walk and see history anymore. They want to be involved in it. So if you're going to do something, you know you have to create uh, an attraction with it. it. It's not just about the historical aspect of the island anymore. If you go to Jamaica. Um, they have this um, a very interesting tour that they took it out of the movie from the from the bobsled um, Jamaica bobsled team, yeah. and they actually created a whole um, attraction into it, and that is what people want to see now. They they want to be involved in in new things. So once you're creative, you can be involved in in the industry. But if you're not creative and you just sit back and complain, well then you don't get in, in involved in these things, and that's why. It's important that we are constantly pushing and one of the areas that I said um, to many of the managers on the island of our government company, it isn't about only the profitability of the company, it is also about that you employing our local people and making sure our young people uh, are educated in the sense of knowing if, if uh, a traffic controller is going to be retiring in five years from now, you need to already start looking in the school to see which student you can send away to, to become an air traffic controller, you understand? Or it's not always about uh, um, having the company um, run by foreigners, it is also about having the, our own local people going away and study. So if we have to bring in a foreigner, we have to have somebody of a counterpart to be able to learn how that person is going so that we create jobs. Because that is got, it has to be 
the, 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 the priority of government and the priority of government-owned companies. All right, going to be right back uh, with MP, how is the leader of the UP Party right here on the August Live. At SXM, we're taking travel and tourism to new heights. Here we boast spacious check-in areas, 10 passport control points, comfortable departure lounges, and an exciting new airport mall. Finally, there's an airport in the Caribbean that takes your travel plans as seriously as you do. Princess Juliana International Airport. Whatever your dreams are, with personal loans and mortgages can finance your wishes. We offer loans for mortgages, home remodeling, home appliances, vehicles, generators, hurricane shutters, weddings, education, and much more. Visit your preferred branch or with personal loans and mortgages located at Prime Plaza Bush Road or call 542-2313. The Win Rounds Bank Limited, your partner in progress. You're watching uh, Oral Gibbs Live with the leader of the Up Party, uh, Mr. Theodore Halliger. And when you look, you mentioned earlier that you know, the, the, the coups, almost two million, but we've seen over the years quite a drop in stay-over tourism. And we're hearing from so many experts saying, Simran, have to do something about it. Any plans in that area? Well, Oral, you know, one of the things is that we, we need to, <clears throat> if you want to develop that, you need to have an area where <laughs> you can actually build a hotel. And um, the main thing, when you look at other islands, and, and here's again <clears throat> where politicians have, have abused the situation and, and have, I'll say, blatantly lied to the people in, in terms of that we give away so much to have these big investors come. And it's not true. We don't really have an uh, uh, investor package for when they come to the country. When you look at countries uh, like Jamaica, Barbados, and, and areas like that, they have, um, they give the land, they give uh, a loan um, from the, uh, I'll give you an example, uh, the Jamaica um, Investment Bank, the JIB, uh, they, they bring up monies for it. Uh, then you, you bring in foreign um, governments also guarantee certain products. Here in St. Martin, what we give you? Uh, a 10-year tax holiday. And basically, Earl, I mean, you're a businessman. Uh, no business or uh, no normal business will make back its money in the first 10 years. It's probably after that. So, in the first 10 years, you, you're already not making anything in terms of profit taxes or, or profits or whatever. You're making it after the 10 years. So, uh, you know, having that, the, the, what we're giving out is only really something of help towards, for example, the banks and things like that for them to get their loans. Um, uh, these things, you have to give incentive for people um, to want to invest in the country. Uh, you have an area like uh, Amalad Bay, you have an area like Indigo Bay that has beautiful beaches um, still, uh, and they are the only real land that is still available. <clears throat> but you need to create, one, a stable government. You can't have a, a government every year uh, changing. Uh, imagine uh, the investor comes in, he says, okay, I have an investment team, we're going to pump in $100, $150 million. All right, today I meet with Teo, uh, next week I'm meeting with Jack. And the follow, I mean, every year you're, you're, you're changing the minister. And, and what happens then too? Too many policies change as well, oral. Um, the reason why, uh, and I will say it in, in one of the speeches that I'm doing at the FCC, is that we were able to have um, stable government for nearly 12 years without any real interruptions. And we were able to, the commitments that were made, we were able to carry them out. And that's the real thing that many investors look to the island. It's not uh, to keep a, a, any certain politician in power, mm -hmm. but you need to have consistency in government. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I recall speaking with um, the president of uh, Royal Caribbean uh, when you were there on the new ship. And that was one of the things he said, that in St. Martin they had that, while in other Caribbean islands. It was not possible. That's right. And, and again, Oral, mm -hmm. and I say it again, look at the last four years. Tell me what new product has been able to evolve in the last four years when it comes to tourism. Nothing. Not one. Not one. Yeah. And, and it tells you one thing because you're not able to, um, uh, to have sustainable government. You're not able to have the sustainable vision. You're not able to have 
sustainable product to be able to develop. You're, you're looking for new developers. You know, one government comes in, next one talks about a tunnel, this one talks about that, but you're not doing anything new to encourage um, uh, tourism development in the country. Because we talked about Gamilio Wilson, it was immediately discarded. Uh, here's a beautiful product um, that was going to be done for the population and the tourists alike. And, you know, it was discarded without even thinking about it because it was something of an idea from Teo. You know, it, it, it's terrible to see how far we go. Well, what about the um, diverse property, property land? Mm -hmm. um, there's very little flat land remaining in St. Martin. Don't you think ultimately government will have to purchase that property? Well, or, or, <clears throat> let me tell you another one. Mm -hmm. There are over two or three thousand requests for homes by the Samaritan Housing um, Foundation. Two to three thousand. Huh? The biggest issue when I go to campaign, I go to see people, is the living condition that the people live. <clears throat> you have kids still living at home, or they build an apartment in the back because they can't afford to build a home. I said it. Whether <clears throat> the land is going to cost a dollar, two dollars, if the government that is asking for your vote says, listen, I'm going to buy land and I'm going to subsidize it so that my people can have a home. I'm telling you in advance that I'm going to do so. That is called transparency. So I'm telling you, divorce land, divorce family, local family or a local family, <clears throat> all right? Not a foreign family, a local family. Goes, signs a deal, not with me, with the former government to lease the land to them. When we got back in the government, we said, listen, <clears throat> we're not against any local family. We would like to help another 50 local families. Rather than continuing to lease the land, our belief is to buy the land. We want to purchase the land. Their simple equation was, listen, the lease would have given us X amount of money over um, the 30 years that we had. And then after the 30 years, we go in for another lease again. So rather than that, <clears throat> we want, um, um, I can't remember the exact uh, figure, but this is the figure that we want, which is equivalent to less than the lease um, um, value over the 30 years. So government at that time, at this time, thought it a good deal. We're able to buy land from a local family to be able to develop homes for local families as well. I don't see what the, 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 the issue was. Of course, it was blown out of proportion. Um, no less than three attempts uh, to fire uh, the, the minister, Maurice Lake, <clears throat> because of this, um, this deal. I'll tell you something, or else it is the intention of this government um, to continue to purchase the lands, continue to look for more land to, to purchase, and to continue to develop housing for the people of Samaria. It cannot be that my people, our people, um, continue not to have the ability to, to own a home and, to, uh, and not have the ability to be able to have a good standard of living. All right, we're going to be right back with our MP Halga, leader of the Up Party right here, and speaking of uh, Oral Gibbs Live, right back. have just joined us, you're watching our Oral Gibbs Live. We're almost to the end of the program. We're speaking with the leader of the UP Party, MP uh, Heiliger. He's my guest this evening as they take office on the 1st of October. And this is actually the first real parliament of Simran because the other one, the election of September 17, uh, 2010, was actually for the island government and you all move over to parliament, right? Yeah, you, you, you're very correct, Oral, because in... Um the last election that we had, this last one itself, um, was for the first time the Parliament of Samadhan. So a lot of new rules and regulations um, uh, were done in this one because the, the one previous to that was an island council election and then actually you were, you were transformed into the Parliament of the country. Uh, in this one here, we had rules on how parties could uh, be financed, how individuals um, could be financed. 
uh, you had rules of um, uh, how we had to present our financials um, at the end of the, the, the election campaign. So it's, uh, it's uh, a lot of changes have happened um, in the last uh, few years. Mm -hmm. And um, now uh, this Friday, you're going to uh, hear the swearing in of uh, 15 brand new parliamentarians. Quite a few of the, the older ones are gone <coughs> and there are quite a few new ones coming in. Now, are you going to give us a scoop? Are you going to be prime minister? Well, you know, I, um, I made a promise to the population of St. Martin during the campaign and one of the biggest issues that I had to answer every time uh, because I, I think that the, the population itself <coughs> have a notion that if they vote for you, they want to see you in a certain position. Mm. I got 1,945 votes uh, personally, so one third of the party's votes. Um, if I made that uh, promise to the people, I have to uh, keep it um, oral. So, yes, I will um, be the, the new Prime Minister of Country Samad. And uh, will you, your first trip abroad, will that be to Holland? I don't know if it will be to Holland, but I can tell you one of the things that I intend to do mm -hmm. is uh, uh, create and foster better relationships within the Caribbean. Um, you know, the, 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 uh, my grandfather had a great relationship with uh, the people of St. Kitts. Uh, I think that needs to be fostered. Um, you know, the, 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 as Prime Minister itself, you, you have uh, the, the foreign affairs uh, position as well. And you need to create a strong bond, um, not only with the Caribbean brothers and sisters, but also those of the former Netherlands and Tillys, you know, the Sabre, the Stacia, um, Aruba, uh, Bonaire, and Curacao. So those are, will be one of the, the, the ones. And uh, one of the, the, the biggest requests and first requests will be to um, meet with the, the government in Holland as well. Don't worry. Well, uh, MB Helgama, thank you for coming in and uh, much success. Thank you, Earl, and thank you, and have a good evening to all your televiewers. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time right here on our Oral Gibbs Live. Until then, good night. Take care. Bye.